Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Tuesday, January 11th. I know you guys are all trying to absorb yesterday's episode with the $7 million man, but I just want to let you know that the reality is that Mark can't not get over not just the $7 million, but what he cannot really deal with is the eight children. Eight children, ladies and gentlemen, eight children children all under the age of 15. No multiple births. That's a first for the Jill on Money show. I'll tell you that much. Uh, If you've got eight children or no children or somewhere in between, just have having that conversation. It just, it blows my mind. Anyway, um, we would love to hear from you if you have any financial issues, questions, concerns. And a lot of what Mark and I are trying to do is just to be a sounding board just to chit chat with you. Yes, we are both certified financial planners, but we don't do it for a living. We we do media crap for a living and we love to talk to you. We love to answer your calls. But if we think you need more professional advice, we'll let you know. Don't worry. We're just kind of like, uh, just consider us like your community. We're your, we're your pals, okay? We're your coaches. Sometimes a little tough love. Mark's tougher than I am. No, not really. Mark, who's tougher, you or me, when it comes to like being hard on the caller? You think I am? Oh my God, you answered that very quickly. Okay. Um, I can be tough sometimes, but uh, you know, I, I'm. it's all because I love you. I do it because I love you. <laughs> if you've got a question, go to jillonmoney.com, that gorgeous brandy new website, jillonmoney.com. Click the contact button. That is what Mark did. Mark is on the line from Maryland. Welcome to the program, Mark. How are you today? I'm doing great. I uh, The school system has a snow day today, but uh, I'm retired and I don't really care anymore. Oh my God. Were you part of a school system? Yes, for 38 years. Really? Yeah. What did you, what did you, did you teach? Were you an administrator? I was sort of an administrator. Uh, I was an assistive technology specialist, a speech language pathologist that worked with special needs children who kids like with uh, developmental disabilities, autism, who needed to be using uh, uh, computer technology to be able to communicate like tablets, uh, uh, Apple devices to be able to communicate with others because of limited speech communication. Wow. You're a do-gooder. So you're, you, you put your time in and you did good while you were there. That sounds yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So I was able to retire. I'm married and my wife, uh, I retired July 1st of 2021 and my wife retired from her nursing job, uh, August 1st, and she's still working part time and she's, uh, She's miserable and driving me crazy, but being a nurse, but Hey, it's, uh, it's money and we're, uh, we're, we're holding on. So <laughs> she's miserable. What kind of nurse is she? Uh, she's an oncology specialist. Oy, yeah. that's, you guys are both in like some serious do gooding professions. So yeah, we, that, that's yeah we didn't talk about our professions with each other too often. It made us each other depressed too much. <laughs> I know. Although I will say this, um, when I was a young pup on Wall Street, I was a volunteer. I don't know if you know this, Mark. I volunteered at Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital, and I volunteered in the pediatric oncology ward, which in the late 80s was like basically no one was in there very long because most of them died. But I would tell you that it was the most gratifying, heartwarming experience, especially compared to being a commodities trader. So there's a part of that that's like a gift of saying to somebody like they teach us something every single day, right? No doubt. All right. So let's get to you. Enough about me. You retired after 38 years. Tell me about the, first of all, how old are each of you? I'm uh, 61 and my wife is 62. Okay. And now tell me about the pension. So I I got a school pension. That's about uh, $67,000. Well, actually $57,000 for the pension. I just started my own uh, consulting business and I make about $10,000 so far. So I'm saying about $67,000 for the year for myself. Great. My wife has a pension from her hospital uh, scenario and she's only getting 19 K uh, she's working part time, taking about sixty eight thousand a year. So total. Whoa, 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 whoa! Six eight. Six eight at a part time basis. Wow. Okay. Uh, 
that's amazing. Do you get um do you get uh medical coverage through your pension? Yeah, you're not gonna believe this. So I was getting gonna get really good medical coverage, which is only gonna cost me probably about seven hundred dollars a month for family. It's actually cheaper to go on to her uh, benefits on a part time basis. So we're paying under seven hundred dollars a month, well under a seven hundred dollars a month for for our medical with her. So we're staying. What do you mean? Well, under like 600 or 650? Uh, or... It's probably costing us about 300 some dollars a month for. Get out of here. 300 yeah, bucks a month. Might get just a little bit more than that. Yeah. All right. I'll call it 350, but that only, and that is only as long as she's consulting, right? Yeah, as long as she's working. And then when she's done there, we get to bop back onto my school system, uh, healthcare program. Okay, which is the seven hundred, right. but both in both cases very affordable. Very much so. It's just amazing, quite frankly. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so how long is she going to work part time? She's sixty two and she's miserable. Well, she says she's n- miserable, but you know, like us all, it's a part of our worldview, and so nurses are a kind of unique breed in that uh, a lot of them will continue to work for a long time, and uh, she'll go as long as she can. She's able to. I'm encouraging her to to consider retiring soon in the next couple, two or three years, quite frankly. If you look at your current spending needs, what do you think that is? What are your needs you know, for income? I, I use a personal capital, which is great in terms of figuring those things out. Uh, but I would mm-hmm. say we range some, somewhere between eight to $10,000 a month. And will you both be entitled to social security? Yes. What's the game plan on that? Like delay that as long as she's working? Or well, what? my advisors basically tell me that uh, it makes sense for me. I'm one of those few where it, it just ma- it makes sense for me to start collecting it probably at 62. Why is that? I got a good pension and I'm doing pretty well in terms of how I'm actually saving my money and what we're doing right now. So there's a little bit of a gap between now and 70 and I don't really want to touch anything that uh, is a part of my retirement for a while yet. Hmm. Tell me a little bit about what's going on in like the money you've saved. First of all, let's talk about, um, house. You own a home. Yeah, I own a home. Uh, it's, it's worth a million two and we owe about four fifty five on it. It's got a 30 year fixed at 2.65%. Get out. I'll never, I'll never pay it off. But you're going to stay in that house. You like that. Yeah. Although, although there's a possibility that with the kids, we still have both boys at home right now because mm-hmm. of COVID and school. I think eventually we might consider downsizing and doing something a little different, but that's probably seven or eight years out. Okay. How old are the kids? Uh, 26 and 23. So the 23-year-old you're still supporting, 26-year-old financially stable yeah, um, pretty, on his own? Pretty home? much. He's one of these classic kids where he was out of college. He did really, did really well getting a nice job. And then all of a sudden COVID hit, he got laid off. And now he's mm. now he's at home and uh, just found a job in uh, midsummer. So he's still at home for a little while, but looking to hopefully move out soon. How about money you guys have saved? Like, let's do the boring stuff. Emergency reserve fund, like money in the bank. Yeah, we have about $300,000 in cash in the bank. And I know that sounds crazy, but some of that money was cash out from sick leave. We had a, a $200,000 reserve for a while there that we were just holding for our emergency fund cash reserves. We wanted to remodel a kitchen. And uh, part of our retirement planning was to probably buy a new new truck at some point, but I don't want to buy a tr- new truck anytime soon. Well, how much are we should we assume that you soak up with the, the house stuff, like whatever you want to do in the yeah, house? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking right around uh, between the, the truck and the, and the car, probably something around 150000 maybe. So you'll be left with 150 in cash yeah, eventually. 150, okay. 200, yeah. Okay, which is fine. So you have the emergency reserve fund. Is there any money that's in non-retirement assets, yeah. like a brokerage account? Yeah, I have. I still have uh, a taxable account with a financial planning firm for 283000 They're charging me about 1% assets under management with that. So it's two hundred eighty three thousand dollars. You're paying one percent to a financial planning firm for the management of just that, or is just, there something else they're managing? Just that. And one of the things okay. that I that I did is I did roll over our four hundred three bs and our four fifty and our four fifty seven to a company that's charging me seventy basis points to manage the the money. I I've always felt like uncomfortable. The easy part was really making the money. 
you know, investing mm-hmm. and making the money. But in terms of of the distribution of income and the money and, and the volatility of markets and all that, then I feel like you're 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 introducing me to a whole new complexity that I'm really nervous about uh, doing it myself. So I've I have felt like you know sticking with a with an advisor, but I'm just have been doing the math, and the math mm-hmm. is just drives me nuts. <laughs> On personal capital alone, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of the next 25 plus years. Yeah. So um, how much money in has been rolled over? 2.3 million has been rolled over at 70 basis points. So when I look at where like this second, forgetting about your consulting income for a moment, right. I'm just going to put that aside as if it doesn't exist. Right. The two pensions plus your wife's f- part-time work generates about 144,000. That should be covers most of your basic needs, right? Yes. Like that, that amount. Okay. So I don't see any reason why you would take social security at age 62. I got to be, honest. I don't know who gave you that advice. I think it's crap. Yeah. I really do. It doesn't seem like you need that money. And we are not sure why you would take that permanent haircut to your social security. It seems like, I, I mean, yeah. you're healthy, right? You're a healthy guy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fairly healthy. Uh, although I, I wasn't able to qualify for long-term care insurance when I was able to, when we looked at it at 55, yeah, you don't but I don't it. really think I need it. I think I can self-insure at this point. Absolutely. I mean, look, your wife doesn't have to work at 68, you know, making the 68,000. She could pull back a little bit also. You know, she doesn't have to make herself so crazy. Right. Is there a certain amount she has to earn to qualify for the medical insurance? Is it what's going on? Why is it like if if she's really not happy, I don't want to make her work. You guys are in great financial shape. There's there's yeah. no doubt about I it. I think I think the reality I think I think she does understand that she could retire. And I think she's going to wait just for a little while. And that's fine. I think it's just going to play itself out. I think things get it, are getting increasingly intense again, uh, like mm-hmm. they were a year ago uh, with, with providing service to people. But anyways, we'll, we'll figure that out. One of the interesting phenomena or feelings that we've had is that in the last uh, four years, I guess, uh, we were really maxing out our 403Bs and 457s. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden we retired, right? And then we weren't yeah. putting that money away anymore. It's easy to live on what we're living on because we're no longer investing that money anymore. Uh, right. You know, all of a sudden it's like it's like well, all of a sudden we found this free money, and it's like this total new feeling. Am I am I doing the math in my head right on that? You are a hundred percent correct. You should not be using a retirement account at this point. Let me let me go big picture down to the narrow. Okay. You guys are in amazing financial condition. And what's amazing also is that I know you didn't make a ton of money throughout your career, but you were in professions with these pensions that are now really taking the edge off of what you need to do for retirement. In terms of your income needs, you know, even if it's you said eight to ten thousand a month, let's say it's ten thousand a month, that you need a hundred twenty thousand dollars net. Obviously, a lot of your money has not been taxed yet. Even with that, if you say to yourselves, well, wait a minute, you know, for a while, like at least until, let's even just say until, let's just say until your full retirement age, because I think you probably could wait till your age 70. But let's, what's your full retirement age for Social Security? 66, 7? Yeah, 67, I think it is. What's the Social Security benefit estimate that you have looked at? I, I think if I don't have it written down, but I think it's 3000 something a month. And you probably both will get that because you're both working. Yeah. Right. And you both have your own record. So if you think about that, just I want to put this in perspective for a second. So let's just say that I am in, I'll even undershoot it. It's, you know, it's, you say it's more, it's probably more than 3000, but let's say it's 6,000 between the two of you, right? That's 72 grand plus your 57 plus her 19. Even that is like basically all of your needs. It's unbelievable. So, I mean, uh, all right, I'll, I'll add it in. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's only 150. You have to pay tax on it. Maybe it's not, you know what you're going to need to dip into in your retire in your total sort of like slush fund retirement and non-retirement. Maybe it's going to be 10, 15, maybe it's 20 grand a year. Who cares? You already have accumulated that. So 
you are in great shape. No, you should not be putting more money into retirement. You should be living however you need to live. You are doing a phenomenal job. Look, I don't know so much about the the folks who are managing your money at 70 basis points. It seems to me that you're calling us, you're chatting with us because there's something that's nagging at you underneath all of this. And I don't know if it's the fee or the people who are advising you or what. But if that's the case, you do have other alternatives. You certainly, I mean, you have an account at Vanguard. I'll just bring that up for a second. I'm not in the can for Vanguard. They've never sponsored the show, but I do love them. They have a service that's called the Vanguard Personal Service Advisor. If you have at least 50 grand, I think it is, is the minimum, you can get money management like a robo-advisor and you can get financial planning for 30 basis points a year. So you could do something like that. You could go to a fee-only financial planner to do one big fat financial plan that proves what I think is pretty obvious, which is you're in great shape. I mean, in some respects, it feels to me like you're just, it, it's very weird to go through this thing, this transition thing called retirement because you're workers and you've been working your whole lives, but you've done everything correct. And what I, I guess is that I look at here is number one, I would keep that emergency reserve fatter than you might normally think because not just to do the work, but not just to buy the car, but because you've got kids who still might need some help. And because you may have, your wife may say in three weeks, like, I'm freaking done. I'm not doing this anymore, you know, in which case then you're going to need to tap some of the money. And if she does start to at least have feelings of like, I don't want to do this anymore. Give her an out, which is not just zero or a hundred, meaning she doesn't have to say retire. She could just, you could say, don't take as many hours. Like, well, let's make it easier for you, honey. Like we're in great shape. Jill and Mark told me so. No, seriously, you're in really good shape. So that even if it were that you, instead of making $68,000, she was making 30,000. And even if you said, well, 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 we have to pay $700 a month, not $350 a month for health insurance. doesn't matter. You are in such good shape. Right now, she's we kicked up the contributions to her plan. Uh, we, I think we kicked it up to like 65% to get it to get it to a max out for the 2021 mm-hmm. uh, year. But I think mm-hmm. we want to just simply stop contributing to the to yeah. the to her her plan, well, there's a little bit of match going on there. So we just, I would just, that. just give, just contribute up to the match. Just let's grab that money. But after that done, you're done and live on that and give her the out, give her an out that says, if this is too much, please, you don't have to do this, but I understand if you want to keep working, it's a nice social touch point. It, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot that people get out of work. You're finding it yourself. You've got a little consulting thing going on, but neither of you should feel any pressure at all. You've done all of the hard work. And for those people who are listening, what's fascinating about this is as we're talking through you can hear that as we start to consider a lot of these big options, some of this is just emotional. You know, Mark's never retired before and neither has your wife. You, This is just a big transition. And so, and so I, I think that you are in very good shape. And if you feel like you want to have, again, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to throw the financial planning firm under the bus in any way, shape or form. So if you are telling me that, you know what, we are going to consolidate the 2.3 million and we did that and we're paying 70 basis points for it. That's fine. The 283 that's at the other place, the 1% money. Eh, I mean, I would just probably move it into a Vanguard uh, account right now. You read my mind because that's kind of what I was thinking maybe that, you know, they don't really, why pay additional $3,000 for them to manage that? And, and if you start to feel like you're really comfortable at Vanguard, maybe you want to experiment with the Vanguard personal service advisor with that brokerage account. I could be with this, these guys that are at, at 70 basis points until I start feeling comfortable. And then if I want to go to Vanguard at 30 basis points, I could do that at another point in time a little bit later. Exactly. You can either manage it yourself, but with that 300 grand, you might even say, well, maybe I'll test out Vanguard personal service advisor. Maybe it sucks. Maybe you hate it. Maybe you, whatever. You can try it out if you want to, or you could just do it yourself. 
and you can keep it simple. I mean, again, simple means a few index funds. You're not putting any of the cash in there. Really, it's not worth it. And the money that's in that brokerage account should be very conservatively managed, meaning that really no more than 50% in high risk stuff. Hey, one last question, though. Do you think we're moving through a phase a little bit where, you know, a lot of emphasis has been placed on index funds and, and managing things yourself? And I totally get it because of just how inexpensive it is. But as things get more complicated down the way, do you think we're going to move back a little bit for, towards a little bit more management? And maybe maybe a guy like me is sweating over nothing, especially when you consider math is math. I'm paying $230 a month on cable. I should be worried about that and, and what that means. <laughs> uh, I think that managed, as somebody who comes out of the, the system where we all loved I, the idea like we can manage it's baloney. It's baloney. There's no, I mean, look, unless managed funds are dropping their fees dramatically, there's not a lot of evidence out there that anyone who's a manager can outperform the index over the long term. And I go back to kind of a couple of premises. Number one, you know, it was very instructive to me to see that Warren Buffett writes a letter to his shareholders, but also to his family and says, when I die, do me a favor, buy the S&P 500 index and go to sleep at night. Now, do I think that there is a ton of value that a certified financial planner or a CPA can bring to your life? Absolutely. Because they can see things in your financial plan that will save you big money and not just talking about the cable bill or the streaming, extra streaming. They might say to you, like, holy smokes, you've got this big, massive amount of money that you've accumulated and you have a terrible estate plan. You know, but again, I don't think that the financial markets are as complicated as your financial life could be. In your case, your life is not complicated because you have income. And so because you have all this income, you're in phenomenal shape. That's it. Phenomenal shape. And we are very grateful for you spending the time with us. And we wish you the very best of luck. So keep in touch. Let us know how things go. Thank you so much. You've been great. Thank you. All right. If you, like Mark, want a little bit of a run through, an analysis, a talk, a coaching session, a chit chat, let us know. Go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact button. While you're there, please do sign up for the free weekly newsletter. See, Mark, I'm emphasizing it just like you said. It's free. It comes out every Friday. Mark does a great job. Uh, If you're listening to this, uh, you probably already subscribe. But if you don't subscribe, please do wherever you get your podcasts and check out our sister broadcast. It's called Eye on Money. And there you get to hear Mark's voice every Tuesday and Thursday. So Jill on Money, Eye on Money, everything's on the website. So check it out. All right. Lift someone up today. Grit, growth, grace. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 